Not small trees, which some people will love and some people will hate. And unfortunately, for people who will watch this later on, you will not be able to see the live stream chat because there is a glitch right now, so that will not update, but everyone's laughing at me as we have massive trees. And this is Forest Nothing with Exploding King. So let me do the introductions. I'll kind of break it down, talk about how it all works. You're probably familiar with Forest Nothing. Here in the teal, we have Hymax playing as the Tootins. Here in the, or sure, I'd say Tootins. Uh, here in the orange, we have Demo Dave playing as the Slavs. In the gray, we have Davka playing as the Britons. In the yellow, we have Trebuchet playing as the Bulgarians. In the purple, we have Cuxfield playing as the Ethiopians. In the red, we have a sensitive boy playing as the Khmer. <laughs> In the blue, we have Tommy86 playing as the Cumans. And then last but not least, we have the Emperor Matt, who kind of reminds me of myself because when I first made a username for Age of Empires, it wasn't T90 official, it was T90 XVI, uh, because I just thought... Roman numerals looked cool, and all the AIs had Roman numerals, so... <laughs> Anyways, uh, Emperor Matt is playing as the Huns. So, so yeah, I forgot to enable small trees. This is Force Nothing, and the big thing you need to remember here is that if a king dies, it explodes, and there's a massive explosion radius. It destroys units and buildings and also trees. So it would be really satisfying if someone would accidentally delete their king right now. We'd have this massive circular explosion. Uh, that would look pretty cool from the mini-map, but we're not going to have that. I did have them go fast speed, and so they're going to eventually just try and build up here. They have the chop space. They have to make a mill and then probably delete it so they can maintain the space and then farm, make houses and all those things. Now, the good news about a regicide start on this is that you start with more vills. So you start with more vills and with more resources, so it's a little less brutal and a little less time-consuming than your standard forest nothing. All right. So, um, I like Force Nothing because oftentimes I use my stream as kind of like a, uh, a time to get closer to people and just interact with people more. And I love casting and, and obviously when it comes to high level stuff to community games to low elo, there's a lot of focus on the games. But I also like the, the little side conversations we're able to have. Uh, and you know, I don't know. I, eventually, you guys are going to run out of questions, and I'm going to run out of stories. But we've been doing this for six and a half years, and I've done an all right job <laughs> keeping up with with things. So yeah, this is kind of the time for that. We do have some people talking about the speed and also the trees. So it is pretty awkward to have to click the trees that are on the bottom side because of the the way they stick up, and it's harder to hit those trees. But for the most part, not too much happening. It is Diplo. They are allied with each other. So maybe later on we'll see that change. Maybe we'll hey, see some yeah. trade or some backstabs. And we can talk about the civs too. Because but Anya. I don't know. If you had a question or wanted to chat about something, uh, this would be the time. It is a little more awkward because people who might see this on YouTube later on can't see the chat. But it is what it is. So... Um, when you run out of stories, just start back at the beginning. You know, you make that joke, but I actually have done that many times. Uh, there's certain stories that I retell, and either people haven't heard it before, or they still think it's funny, so. Um, Curry says, I've been following your stream and vids for a couple years now, but one thing I have not worked out yet. Why are you making fun of Doubt, like Doubt Castles and so on? Um, <laughs> so Doubt is kind of a meme, right? It's, it must be really weird, right? Because Doubt is a high-level player. He's clearly good. He's kind of a meme. And the best way I could explain it is... If you've ever heard Doubt talk or ever had a conversation with Doubt... You, you might understand why people trash talk him and make jokes about him a little bit more. He's constantly... Like, every other word out of his mouth is sarcasm. And he doesn't take himself very seriously. And so that's kind of where, like... I think it, it stems from initially. The other thing is, is that Dal has notoriously complained about people who micro, and he's notorious for failing castles. To the point where this whole meme started where he's the lord, and he fails castles, and his micro is as awful in it. I don't know, like, Dal just kind of turned into a meme. So he's really good, but, uh, you know, a couple of different events transpired, and everyone just, you know, kind of trolls and makes jokes about Dal. And no one really thinks that Dal's bad at the game, right? But everyone... You know, I was constantly talking about doubt. And I think people like doubt because 
I think viewers relate to it because viewers are like, wow, this guy's not very fast. He's not as, as speedy as some of these other nerds, these other gamers. And he's still good. And people will like to root for people who are like that, especially in a strategy game. So, <laughs> um, okay. Um, Doc, what? Asking me about NCAA D3 football? I have no clue. I have no clue. I cannot answer that question. Also, God, my right contact is just suddenly giving me an issue. What's going on here, man? Yeah, um, I think also, like, Doubt being friends with some of the biggest name in the game has also started the Doubt stuff, but the Doubt stuff goes way back. I, I apologize if maybe I haven't explained that stuff too well over the years. T90, when are you having a low ELO Legends tournament slash showdown? I need this in my life. So, bite my assets. I, I want to do a T90 community tournament, which will have a low Eagle legend section to it. Um, and I also, th there's a Sim City tourney I'd like to plan out and do. There's a lot of different events I'd like to do. I, I've been saying this for many months, but I also kind of knew uh, for a month or two prior to, my, to me leaving Twitch that I would be... Like, it would be rough to host an event because of the Switch coming and then getting adapted to it. And then you have the holidays and then AV4. So, just a lot of things going on. I can't give you a when, but I'm hoping in, like, January we're going to have one of those things happen. And then maybe come, like, March, we, we tackle one of the next projects. Demo Dave to see you all in an hour, guys, going for dinner. And he's one of the players here. <laughs> That's funny. I mean, you could, you could chow down on some food while watching this. Look at Demo Dave, though. Look at him. He's he's shift queuing his units onto the next trees. He is not going to dinner. He is tryharding those trees down. What rating is Loey the Legends? A thousand ELO and below. <laughs> though I do say pretty frequently that if you're at around 900, I would say you're probably no longer Loey the Legends because things have changed. <laughs> so. um, Sorry if you had this question a million times already but what are your thoughts about aoe4 so far um good question so it, it's a tough it's been a tough one for me because i regardless of the game just on principle absolutely hate the recurring theme within the gaming industry of unfinished products being released i have very little patience for that and it really bothers me especially when these games sell millions of copies and make millions of dollars um, I think it's unfair to fans. I think it's unfair to to people who buy games. And yet, I can't blame the studios too much because the reality is people were buying stuff anyways, right? So I guess my issue with H4 is that it's not a finished game. And it's it was released in a state where there's so many crucial aspects that RTSs need that where it doesn't have it right now. But at that same time, it's like... If it is what it is, right, and the game's been released in the state it is, it could have been much worse. But also, um, they have said that they're going to improve things. So at this point, I kind of just want to hold out for improvements, see where it goes, and we'll see. I don't think it has as much depth as Age of Empires 2. And I'm not necessarily a guy who has ever desired something new. Because I, the reason I've been on Age 2 for 8 years is because I... I think it's a it's a perfect game, right? I mean, when I say perfect, the elements of the game is perfect. There's still some things that can be improved elsewhere. So I guess long story short, I, I do like aspects of H4. I find it hard to accept some of the things that are that are uh, where it's lacking right now, but I think it'll improve there and we'll kind of see. But I don't know. Like, I think it needs more time for me to really feel if I'm head over heels in love with the game. Or if I'm not, but I know that Age of Empires 2 is going to be a game for me regardless, so. And it's tricky because a lot of, like, people who like Age 4 and have always liked my Age 2 content, they might be, they might really want me to, like, my opinion on Age 4 to match theirs. And then, so, like, it's it's a tough thing as a content creator because, like, people desire different things right now. But I'm going to do both, and we'll see. And as always... Like, Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition is the best version of Age of Empires 2 ever, without a doubt. But, I still won't pull any punches. And if there's things that I think need to be improved, I think I'm going to bring that up. I think I can do a better job, 
and be more a little bit more uh, courteous in how I bring that up. <laughs> That's always been a weakness of mine, but uh, yeah, I'll always be honest in how I feel. That's kind of it. <laughs> yeah, Emperor picked Huns. Now, I mean, they could have gone random sieve. I did allow them to pick. So yeah, maybe they all ended up going random, but I feel like Huns is not bad for the start here. Ups, but it's not... It's probably not great when it gets later on, right? You don't get Onager. You also would have to use Trebs to take out trees. Okay, Gray says he's going to Drush. Teal says they're going Fast Imp into GG. <laughs> Cuxfield says, I'm going to go Fast Castle into accidentally nuking myself. That's funny. But yeah, what, what civs have Siege Onager here? So we have... I forget if Bulgarians get it. Tutans get it, Slavs get it, Ethiopians get it, Cumans get it. Again, I forget about Bulgarians. I feel like they don't. I think it'd be a lot if they got Siege Onager and also got Siege Ram. But yeah, good question. And, and don't feel bad about asking about Age of Empires 4. Everyone's got so many different questions, uh, which is understandable. I just, I'm kind of at a state where I don't have a lot of strong answers because a lot of it depends. Bite my ass, it says, what other industry can you sell an unfinished product and be like, well, we'll send you the fix later. Imagine buying a movie that isn't finished and then they just send you the update later. Yeah, but it's like people buy it anyways. And I'm not here, I'm not here trying to get people to boycott the game because I want the game to be as good as possible, right? Um, if nothing else, just for the people like my friends who are going to compete competitively in it. Like, I want them to have good opportunities there. So that, that's what's tricky. Like, eventually, maybe it'll get to a point where people are not going to buy games that aren't finished, but I, I think it's it's just kind of... I, I don't blame big companies for doing it as long as they, it works for them. <laughs> you know? <laughs> as long as it works for them. And and then the other thing is just, like, it, it's a matter of, of what you understand, I think, right? Like, I think your average gamer isn't going to have issues with some of the things I have issues with. It's going to be completely fine for them. <laughs> William, I will stream Roller Coaster Tycoon. We were just talking about that. I think I'm going to commit to doing it Wednesday. Uh, but I have to look at my schedule for the rest of the month and try and figure out how, how much I want to stream. Because I think if I have if I have some time that I could relax a bit, I'll probably take that. Still stream a lot, of course, but I'll probably take that. People are too harsh on it. It's a fun game. Just enjoy it. Yeah, but like I can't enjoy it, right? This is where everyone comes from different perspectives, right? I can't enjoy it to the same in the same way that I would enjoy another RTS game because it doesn't have aspects that RTS games need to have. But that might only affect like 2% of people. That's what's tricky, right? But yeah, I agree like within the Age of Empires 2 spectrum. People also forget that Age 2 DE was released in a state which wasn't so good either, right? So, it's not like this game was perfect when it came out, and it's not it's not perfect now either, so <laughs> Anyways, good questions, good questions. I just, you know what sucks, though? Because I feel like answering those questions never really... I don't know how to put a word on it, but I feel like answering those questions never really... Um... It, it, it creates more questions than answers, you know? I mean, it feels weird to, to come out as someone who says depends all the time and say that, but... I don't know, I'm really struggling to answer those questions uh, constructively. And that, that's, like, as constructive as I can give my feelings on the matter, but I feel like it doesn't really, doesn't really help, like, as a whole, you know? I just kind of avoid it. <laughs> uh, is there a sense that the push is to move the community to age 4? I don't think so, but I think the worry is, like, Microsoft just said in a statement that they, they want Age of Empires 2 and Age of Empires 4 to thrive. And I think if that's the case, then we'll see age two tournaments continue and age four tournaments to happen as well. If that's not the case, and there's not age two and age four tournaments having happening either simultaneously or like back and forth over the next six to nine months, then I think Microsoft saying they want both communities to thrive at least competitively is not correct. So I'm hoping I'm hoping there will be both. I'm hoping there will be both. Now these guys are credit to the to the guys here. Uh, if you can salute and chat, do it. <laughs> credit to the players. They're just chatting. They're just chatting away. They don't have anything else to really do here, but they are building up, and we're gonna have our first person in feudal age. Actually, right now, 
So we have Hymax in Feudal. Hymax said his score is higher because of scouting. <laughs> And if you've never played Force Nothing, the annoying thing is the lack of space. You've got to constantly delete buildings and rebuild buildings. Like right now, Hymax wants to create more vills, but Hymax doesn't have space for houses. I think what I would do is delete my TC and then make a market. And then I'd sell all my wood except for 275 of it, so I would get gold. Let's see what Tommy does. Oh, wait a second. With Cummins, you can make a second town center. But I guess you're not going to have the food income to keep two TCs pumping, though. That's tricky. Fury says, I played in an online team game once, got insulted by my teammates, and since then, I do not dare to play online again. Yeah, that sucks. It doesn't happen that frequently. Like, I think the Age of Empires community is a whole lot better in that regard than other games. But... I, I've been there, you know, the whole, oh, my teammate sucks. Like, there's nothing more ridiculous than someone blaming a team game loss primarily on their teammate. Like, dude, get over yourself. <laughs> like, come on, get over yourself. I've seen that when I play team games as well. Like, I don't know if they feel like they don't want T90 to think they're a noob, so they have to, like, blame it all on their teammate. Like, come on, dude. You win some, you lose some. It's okay. Yeah. Hmm. All right, so here is the market. So, this is the first person to build the market, unless I missed it. Ethiopians do get plus 100 food and gold when you make it to the next age. So, the whole idea here is you sell all your wood, and you get the best market price. And then what I would suggest is you actually buy a little bit of food instead of waiting. And then you go up to Castle Age. Oh, those prices, though. Yeah, perfect. And then you don't have to worry about selling more wood because you're going to have more wood to chop. So this is a really good start for purple. No, don't. Dude, you're giving someone else good market prices. Okay, not the end of the world. I would have sold more wood, but he's happy with it. On the way to Castle Age, not a bad spot to be. Guess you can always rebuild another market. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Varian, what's up? He says, I've heard a lot of streamers say they have a lot less motivation to play AOE 2 right now. I feel like there's a general feeling the community is growing apart. Do you feel that? And do you think we'll get back to a norm, a more normal feeling? Hmm. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about this in a video, Varian. But I think, like, if you're talking streamers, and this is not to imply that someone, uh, prioritizes only viewership Ow. over every other aspect, right? But, but like, for a streamer, so let's let's say you're a good, you're a high-level player, you're a top-10 player, and you've already dominated age 2 scene. And then age 4 comes out, and you start to stream it. And you're all right in age 4. And you get double the viewership. There's a lot of hype. As a streamer, it's very motivating if you're getting more viewership, and there's a lot of interest in something new, right? There's always that aspect. So... You might not, if you had to pick, necessarily prioritize a new game over the game you've been playing. But I think there's that, like, if there's that hype train there. Street, like, for me, as someone who streamed for six years, you want to always follow that, what's, what's interesting for the viewers at that time. So I think currently, there's, like, a whole lot of reason for people to, to do something new, right? A big reason that I took this deal, and there's a lot of them, is because I want to do what I like. And I don't have to. I don't want to have to worry about the direction anything else is going if that doesn't match what I like, <laughs> right? I love AV2. <laughs> I absolutely love AV2. I really am interested in AV4 as well, but I don't know if I'm ever necessarily gonna like switch over that and only to that. So I, I think it's just a weird time because we never, as age fans, never really had other things to necessarily compete with. So I, I honestly have no clue. But again, my worry is. If Microsoft actually wants Age of Empires 2 to continue the path that it's on, they will continue to back H2 tourneys and H4 tourneys in a back-and-forth manner or a structured manner over the next six to nine months. If we only see H4 tourneys, then I start to worry. So I'm hoping it'll be a good mix, and then everyone's got what they want, and, uh, you know, the community continues to thrive. And Age 2, like, even if all of you guys leave right now, everyone listening to this, let's say you get bored with Age 2, 
and you go to play Halo instead for three years. This game will never die. And I can tell you that because when I started making content for this game, none of you were here. And you either didn't know the game existed or you didn't think anyone still played the game. <laughs> so if people disappear entirely, there's still, like, the community will never go below what it was when I started. I promise you that. It, it was it was dead, dude. You guys shouldn't be listening to me right now. This community was dead. So, um, anyways, that's the way I see it. Um, I, I guess in the worst case outlook, right? Snippy was there. Snippy was there. So Snippy was there, I think, six months after I started. Maybe, maybe a bit longer than that. Obviously, there were still some people, but, you know, I think the biggest YouTuber had 25,000 YouTube subscribers. <laughs> that was Zero Empires. One of, one of the OGs, man. So, um, so yeah, I, I don't know. Like, I, I'm 28, and when I'm 38, I want to still do this, and I don't care. Maybe this is a very old man mindset, but... I kind of don't care about anything other than age two in the long term, so I think there's going to be people like that, and there's people who move on. Mm -hmm. We'll see. Did you ever play Battle of Middle Earth 2? No, I never did. Never did. Um, I did play a little bit of Age of Empires before the Definitive Edition, or before the HD Edition, but I didn't fully commit to, to playing this game all the time until 2013. I watched videos, and I, like, occasionally played a torrented version of The Conquerors on my school laptop in 2011 and 2012. And I did also play this game when I was a kid on my brother's PC. But I never, like, when I started to know life Age of Empires, and only Age of Empires, was 2013. That was uh, April of 2013. So. <laughs> this was a lot more serious than I expected, you know? It's like, whoa! <laughs> Normally I'm talking about the how someone called me chicken on the phone and a bunch of other random stories. <laughs> oh, God. All I want is to play Force Nothing. I will never stop watching your streams until you rig me into a Force Nothing game. Wait, if I rig you into a game you're going to stop watching, why would I ever rig you then? That's not cool. Got some chat here. You need a market and sell wood you didn't know, says Tommy. Tommy, I think Sensitive Boy was joking. Actually, wait. Sensitive Boy wasn't joking. Sensitive Boy didn't even market yet. So Tommy was being helpful and Sensitive Boy was so sensitive he didn't know. That's funny. So, okay, market will be on the way up eventually. And then we'll see some of that gold income come into red. Look at that. Sensitive boy congratulating his teammate. Also, markets will give Carto. So if you look, you can see, uh, you kind of look around and, and get a feel for where everyone else is at. Hmm. Yeah, Kaiser, picking Huns is so nice because you don't have to make houses. The only downside is that you need someone else to monitor the trees for you. Also... Emperor, can you please make some new lumber camps, my friend? This is... This is painful. <laughs> please! Please make some more lumber camps, man. Holy crap, he's walking so far. Yeah, I'm not sure what Red's ELO is. I've seen Sensitive Bl Boy playing community games before. I'm not really sure. But if you look at the populations right now, Emperor Matt has done a really good job. He's just now on the way to Castle, but 61 vils. Purple's doing good, too. But kind of struggling to produce out of all three TCs with only eight farms. Three TCs now for Trebuchet. I think they're they're going to TCs pretty quickly here, but I don't know if they're going to have the food to produce out of them all the time. Falling Star says, I remember the days when you actually had to research Carto, right? Okay, can we talk about things that this game had before the Definitive Edition? I, like, I'm, make, I'm gonna make a video on this, to be clear. So I will 100% steal your ideas, but I might need your help. Because I'm gonna tell you things that used to be present before the Definitive Edition. Uh, eventually patch them out that we had just accepted as normal, okay? 
uh, Palisade Scanning. Do you remember that? So basically, if you had an area scouted, and you thought the enemy might have an army there, you could just try and build something and hover it over an area you've scouted, and if it, if it would glow red, you would know that there was something from the enemy there. Do you remember that? You guys might not even know that's a thing, but that was so ingrained into the minds of high-level players. Because... <laughs> Because it was huge. Like, you could find out where armies were just by scanning. And I remember having to adapt to that not being possible when they patched it out. That was actually that was actually possible at the start of Definitive Edition. And then they patched it out like a year in or something. Yeah, not being able to see how many villagers you had on each resource. Oh, dude, how did we play that? Holy crap. What's Tommy up to? Tommy says, are you friendly, purple? He says, I talked to him. He said he likes you and you have nothing to worry about. Who is Tommy talking about here? Tommy the diplomat. <laughs> um, you think Viper's dominance was part of the Palisade scouting? I mean, everyone did it. But yeah, he certainly did it and benefited it. Remember playing 20 games in a row against the same person and really getting to know them? Yeah, but it wasn't like I made a ton of friends. Uh, Varian, I think they could fix that if they just allowed a rematch, you know? If they allowed you to rematch someone, I think that would be really good. If, if I play someone and I really enjoy the game, or I want revenge, and it says, do you want to rematch? And then I could enable that, would be good. So just to be clear, I'm making... um. This is kind of my thought process. I'm making a video on... Things that used to be a part of the game or not a part of the game that are now. So, like, top 10 things that Definitive Vision improved. I'm making a video on things that need to be introduced to Age of Empires 2 to go to the next level. Like, increased lot, like, better lobby systems and that working restore, um, rematch feature, fixed team games. Uh, and just, like, things like that. That's, that's kind of on my list right now. And, uh, so I like to talk to you guys about it when we have the time. Hmm. But yeah, like, back in the day, dude, it was crazy to me. And we have some similar things with the queue. But people could have three or 400 ELO higher than what they would actually be at. Because they would just host their one thing all the time. So, I, I like, it's also a tough topic. Because one people, some people just want to play what they want to play. And I don't necessarily want to hold them back from that. But I think ranked lobbies are fine. Like, if they were to make ranked lobbies instead of it being a queue. But the biggest thing is you just need a rematch feature. I I think in the old days, you used to have to tell miners to start mining after building a mining camp. Yeah, does anyone know if that was the case in the super old days? Because an HD and the Conquerors, so we're talking like... At least the Conquerors I played, the patch I played from like 2010 onwards. I don't think you had to tell miners to go mine after making a mining camp. I think they did it automatically. But I don't know about the super early days because I, I played so many different versions. Hmm. I don't know. <laughs> this is definitely a case where we say the good old days, but the good old days were not great. Like, Varian says he missed Boobly Lobbies. Varian, do you miss having to play in 400 ping games? <laughs> Like, I get what you mean, but it's so easy to look at the past and be like, oh, that was great. And then if you were to go back, you'd be like, oh, God. The lag issues when we didn't have servers were just so much more insane. I have to say, green's base definitely is, is very satisfying. The lack of lumber camps bothers me efficiency-wise. He would be making more progress otherwise, but... But yeah, I mean, it, it's just so clean to not have to see the houses here. In Age of Kings, was it the case that you had to tell a villager he mines after building a mining camp, but in Conquerors after making the building? Okay, so it was Age of Kings that did that. Gotcha. Yeah, I think that's going to be tricky when I make that video, as I have to do a little bit of research because I didn't, I didn't experience or remember some of the early stuff. But it makes sense. Age of Kings, I think, had a lot of crazy stuff. I mean, people were playing on dial-up back then, right? If they were playing online. Oof, what's up, Brayden? Um, I, I forget. I think it was Bennett who asked the question. 
And he said, uh, he asked me, like, kind of how, how things have gone on this new platform compared to my expectations. They've gone pretty much as I expected and a little bit better in some ways. Um, what's, what's been a little bit better is just how much, like, how at peace I am with it. And how, like, you, when you make a decision, you always worry that you're going to look back with regret. I've had zero regrets. I know this is the best move for all the different reasons I made the decision. I 100% know that. Um, viewership's been about what I expected, and I know it's just going to get better. The thing that's really tricky about the move, like, obviously, a lot of people heard about this move, right? And many people have decided they, they, haven't, they haven't given this shot yet. And some people have said they're not going to. That's just how it goes. The thing that's been tough is that I had 250,000 followers on Twitch. And there's absolutely no way even like 10% of that know about move. <laughs> right? So you build up your your viewership on one platform over over half a decade. And then it's just hard to inform everyone, right? And that's just how it goes. Because some people, I, I saw the analytics in my channel. Like, you guys might watch very consistently. Show up every Friday for community games or watch events. But I had 125,000 unique subscribers on Twitch. But on average, I had like anywhere from like, let's just say four ish thousand. So that means that it's very common for someone to show up, watch, and support, and then never return or return like two years from then. Because you guys, regardless of how you're watching this, are definitely are way more dedicated than the average viewer. So it's, it's like, it's tricky because uh, you just can't inform everyone. And I'm also not gonna like, I don't wanna throw it in front of people's faces. Because I want people, if they're going to be here, I want them to be here. So, that's been the tricky thing. But it's all expected stuff, right? It's just crazy, man. When you're talking, like, how things work with this type of an industry and how viewership works, it's, it's pretty crazy when you break down the numbers. Like, Artem here says he just found out yesterday. Yeah, exactly, right? So, I just don't want to be that guy. Like, do you guys ever watch a YouTube video? Yeah. And they're constantly, like, they'll, they'll have a video, but it's clear they're trying to promote something heavily on top of that. Like, whether it be uh, their podcast or their merch or their stream or something. I just, I think it's important that people know what I'm doing and get excited about it to show up kind of on their own. But what I don't want to do is be that annoying guy who's, like, who's trying to go too far with promoting their next thing. Because what that does is that turns people off from wanting to be around. Right? And that's important because I think that that gives you me a little bit more of a dedicated audience. <laughs> so I think you guys kind of, I think you guys respect that and like that. So. <laughs> Watch your stuff for a while. They started to start watching your streams literally the day you came here. Went to Twitch and saw the notification. Yeah, I feel, I feel bad about like... People showing up to, to watch a stream and then hearing the streamer is going to go elsewhere. But there's not much I can do, right? If people are showing up all the time. Glad you can make it here. T90, did you consider going to Mixer? Um, there will be a day I talk about, I think, everything. Probably not today, but yeah, Mixer did approach me back in the day. Mixer did approach me uh, back when it existed. Very different situation. Probably not going to get into everything right now, but yeah, they did. they did approach me. I wouldn't really say I considered it. But I did, I did talk to them at that time, so. <laughs> Actually, on that note, on that note, when we're talking about, like, the promo stuff in videos, guys, as we're building up towards eventual explosions. So I have, I have merch, and I'm not, like, believe me, I, I don't want to be that guy who, who, who throws merch in your face, right? But... I feel like I never talk about it, and there's been a lot of people who are like, holy crap, like, that'd be a really good gift. Or I really like this mug or really like this t-shirt. And so I'm thinking it's probably a mistake for me not to talk about it a little bit more. I was thinking at the end of Loey the Legend videos, um, I would have like a little plug for the merch and just show people where it is because it's, it, I have like new Loey the Legend merch. If it's a short and sweet thing or even just an image, would that be off-putting to you guys at all? I'm just curious. I think what I'm going to do with my merch anyways is I think I'm actually just going to donate all of my income from merch to charity at the end of each year. Um, 
I've been trying to think about like a, a fun way to put holy villagers, man. Yellow, how many villagers does yellow have? 151. Oh, actually, Demo Dave has 184. Yeah, I think I think I'm gonna be doing that anyways. So if I could boost the amount of, of that comes in from the merch, I think it'd be really cool. Yo, Kate man, what's up? Okay, what I'll do is I'll probably um I'll probably include that and then I'll just look for feedback and then if people say it's too much, I'll just keep an eye out, so. Ah uh, yeah, like the beginning and the middle of the videos is probably super annoying. Okay, that's true. Good point, good point. Yeah, so just keep it short and sweet at the end. Makes sense. Nah, I mean, I'm not really sure. I, I have made a donation each year to a local charity back where I grew up. I'm not necessarily tied to donating to that charity, but it feels like, like I kind of, I left home, you know, and that's, it's one of the bigger charities back where I grew up. And I actually like volunteered there for a bit in my high school days. So I feel like that's probably who I would donate to. It might not ring true to you guys, like, because you didn't grow up there, but I... It makes me feel a little bit better about supporting a cause if it's, like, a, a smaller charity in an area that I used to live. Do it sustainably? Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> I mean, to be honest, guys, like, I'm not I'm not really a big merch streamer, right? So I, I it's not... I've made, like, really what you could consider solid money for merch, but it's... I think it was like $1,100 over four years. <laughs> so like $1,100 over four years before taxes. It's not like, it's not a ton, but I think if I let people know, we could really make a big dent uh, in, in some of their charity goals, so. All right, so let's start with comp, let's, let's start with composition talk, okay? So first off, let's go through Demo Dave. He's making barracks with slabs. Slabs have very good infantry. So that makes sense. And then eventually we're probably going to see the cheap siege, but he's almost got too many villagers right now, which is, I think, fine for now. You eventually delete them because there's nothing else you can really do until you have more space. Um, he doesn't have that much gold, and he's not really talking about trade. Over here, you've got plenty of wood for teal, and high max is Teutons, so could also go for Onager to cut through the trees. Also could... It's pretty much the same. Teutons and Slabs have very similar strengths. Here you've got Emperor Matt making Cav Archers. Now remember, he can't get Onager with Hun, so it's going to be a struggle to get through the trees anyways. In the blue, you've got Tommy. And Tommy's only at 80 pop, so we'll set Tommy back. But Tommy could go for Onager. Tommy has the Siege Workshop on the way to him. Um, and then here... Whoa! He has 10,000 gold! And he's an imp as well. This is huge. Now, they don't get Siege Onager, but Khmer could just go for Onager. Or Ballista Elephants to cut through the trees. But this is what I'm talking about, man. Sell your resources constantly and get gold. Tuxfield, as Onager in, doesn't have as much gold, but is starting to open up some space through the trees. Over here, you've got uh, a potential for a lot of gold for Trebuchet. Who also has Onager and is now cutting towards Gray and is telling Gray to make a market. So yeah, that's this is Diplo. So you you want to find an ally and then use the market to get gold and then spend the gold on trade. That way you have consistent gold income. Um, to Matrix Huns do get two man saw. Yes, they do. So that would Huns aren't the worst for this. That's for sure. Yeah, I think the number one thing you should do if you want to be ultra try, try hard is you should sell. Uh, to get gold, and then you should buy stone. Because the gold you get in return from selling wood is eventually just going to be at uh, 13 or 17 or something. So that's going to be stuck where it is. But the price of buying stone will always increase. So you want to get in while the price is cheap. And right now, no one's really doing it. It's 179 gold to buy 100 stone. With 12,000 gold, I would buy 5,000 stone. <laughs> Math doesn't really check out there, but... That's a try-hard way to do it. Davka seems to have an alliance with Trebuchet. Apart from that, there has been communication. And Red says, Hey, Perp, Tom, Perp gonna kill me? Question mark. Feels like sensitive boy is too sensitive to talk. And Tommy's kind of like the spokesman. 
Which is funny. And I didn't respond to him yet. So I don't think Purple actually wants to kill him, but something to think about. Yeah, there's actually no upper limit on the price. There's there's no upper limit on the price of stone. I think the most expensive I've ever seen stone was like 1,500 gold for 100 stone. And it wasn't a Force Nothing game, if I recall. Might have actually been one that I played in. I remember I, I told my viewers, I think it was four years ago, one more game. And I had about two and a half hours. I, I had to go to volleyball. And I ended up missing volleyball <laughs> because I played in a Forest Nothing game. And freaking T West, bro. <laughs> yeah, like, it might have actually been five years ago. I forget how long it was now. But T West and a few others. Oh, they were so try hard. They bought all the stone and they traded. And then I got really upset. Well, not like truthfully upset, like, seriously upset, but I got annoyed because they were ganging up on me. So then I had to fight and really take it seriously. And it went on for six hours. And then I died anyways. And then my volleyball team lost. Feels bad, man. I actually would love to get back into playing volleyball. Just something organized once a week or once every other week would be so good for me. And I used to, but then COVID happens. And then I never really got back into things, and I'm in a different area now, so. Yeah, maybe this conversation is going to get me back into it. You know what I thought would be really funny? So I've been going to trivia every once in a while with friends. And I thought it would be, would be really funny to, to write down the questions that they ask and ask my viewers and see if my viewers could figure it out. Because our team is pretty average in trivia, even though we try. And I thought, like, you know, like, it's every Wednesday, so every Thursday stream or every community game stream. I just bring out a couple of the questions and just see. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of like a pub quiz. Yeah, I guess I don't know what a pub quiz is, but it sounds right. It's just like a small brewery. Nothing crazy, not too many people. Hmm. So it's not exploding villas, it's exploding kings. We have the trade here from yellow starting sign of of peace to come in in the lands here i hear death though why do i hear death did you guys hear that i heard villagers dying i think maybe i heard orange's villagers dying to his onagers here you still have your volleyball bikini i didn't wear a bikini man i wore shorts and a t-shirt t90 trivia you don't even know where wyoming is okay you can stop that right there okay i know where wyoming is there, there might be a few states that would give me a, some problems, but I know where Wyoming is. And it's not like fifth graders trivia. The problem is, is like the average age of people who go to this freaking thing is like 50. So it's always like they have named that tune and it's always songs from the 70s and 80s. So we, we don't do too well. We're very, we're a very one-sided group in terms of what we, uh, in terms of what uh, we we know like for me i'm pretty good when it comes to sports and i'm fairly good when it comes to um like video games and things like that and then our group is like mainly science oriented so we're very very one-sided hmm yeah of course wyoming is in france duh of course no siege monitor yet for demo dave and i'm unsure and if he's cutting to be friends with this person or not because that's a lot of onagers. I think he's going to try, though. It seems like he's making it pretty clear what he's up to. He's also not making any inventory yet, so... Feels like he might just be doing this to trade. And it's interesting, because Gray doesn't necessarily seem to be talking much. Gray doesn't necessarily seem to be, like, the best player. But everyone wants to trade through Gray. High green want to trade, says Teal. Well, what green needs is for someone to cut through the wood lines. Now you have red saying, hey, perp want to trade. Okay, so they're just maybe late to the conversation here. Yeah, I actually would love to go back to Wyoming. I was in Wyoming when I was growing up. It was a really good trip. I think uh, as well, it's like... Does anyone know where Old Faithful is? Is that the Dakotas? I forget. Anyways, it's somewhere out there. Um, and we were in Wyoming, uh, like Yellowstone National Park, and um, a few different parks up there when I was a kid. And I think it's one of those things that I'd like to do again at some point. 
Whoa. So Tommy's committing to cutting through the middle, which is super weird. He's cutting right to yellow. And they should be able to see this as well. Old Faithful's in Montana. Is it really in Montana? I thought Old Faithful was in Yellowstone, which is in Wyoming. Maybe, maybe it's another geyser I'm thinking of. You guys want to hear a funny story, though? So, I was like five years old when we went out there. And it was with my family, right? And so, I, at the time, my favorite animal was a horse. Okay, it is Wyoming. And, uh, or maybe, maybe Yellowstone goes into, maybe it like, maybe it goes into multiple states. I don't know. So anyways, to, to finish this story before the attack start, my favorite animal was a horse till I was like 10. And so one of the things we did was we went on like a family a horse ride. So we were all on separate horses. It was actually a really funny memory because my dad's horse did not like him. <laughs> So my dad's horse refused to listen to him and would go the other way all the time. Anyways, it was really funny. He hated it. Um, so we had like a horse instructor and I was on her horse because I was only five. And she was really sweet and really nice to me. And so five-year-old T90 was like, she must like me. And so I had a crush on her. She's like 25 or 26 and five-year-old T90 was all about it. So I told my brother that I had a crush on her. And he's like, oh, here, we should go to the gift store. And so we went in, and I found a horse stuffed animal. And I bought it. And then <laughs> I, I found out, like, where their little, uh, wherever their cabin was that they worked out of. And hours later, we went up, and I gave her the stuffed animal. And then I was so shy, I ran out of the room blushing. And... That's that's the story. I remember like I actually still feel I'm still blushing right now because I remember how big of a step that was for me. <laughs> Had a crush on the uh on the horse instructor, man. Or whatever you'd call that. Yo blue, how can I help? Yo blue, how can I help? says yellow twice. If anyone wants to chop to me for trade, I'd be willing, says green. Didn't someone offer earlier? I'm pretty sure Hymax offered earlier, buddy. Not much has changed. Yeah, man. <laughs> but yeah, that was a good trip. That was a good trip. I enjoyed that. Lots of wildlife out there. I'll trade with you, says Teal. So this is like 15 minutes later. Yes. They could have been trading this entire time. Meanwhile, Yellow and Gray have been trading. And it's not the most efficient trade, but it is something. Orange is trading as well. Also, Purple's thinking long-term. He's cut all the way down here for trade. The further your markets are apart from each other, the more gold you get, which is why that makes sense. But I think it would have made sense to cut in towards red and already be trading and then just make more markets later on. Talking only to you, says Yellow. Tommy says, do you want to trade or planning to destroy me? I have a feeling that Tommy's whole cutting through the middle thing is going to look pretty silly at some point. But I don't know who Trebuchet's talking to. He says, I'm not as long as you're not. Hmm. So you're saying Lorena is 45? No. I actually didn't think of that story. That's the first time I've ever told that story. Because, like, why would that story ever come up? Five-year-old T90. <laughs> oh, God. Like, trading through the middle is so bad because, okay, so first off, your trade's more vulnerable to attack, I'd say. And then the other thing I think is an issue is that you're not teaming up with people on the sides of you. Like, if you deny trade with them, they're just going to say, oh, I'm going to kill you then. So it feels very weird. Chuxfield says, T90 taught me well as farms are being placed. That's probably a farm joke, but we're not going to laugh at that. I didn't teach him who to trade with because we still haven't seen the trade yet. To be fair, though, uh, no, no, not to be fair. There's just not a lot of gold right now. Probably should have more gold in the bank than that. But I, on the bright side for Tommy, at least he is trading. Like, I think half of the players aren't even trading yet, so... And Yellow seems to agree with it. All right, and now we have Purple saying he's going to cut towards... Red. 
a red is making ballista elephants, which you can actually use to take out trees. So both players had an option to cut through. Maybe not a whole lot of uh, trust there. But remember that when a king goes down, there will be a massive explosion. I'm just waiting for it. And I feel like they're far enough away where wa there won't be a chain reaction with the explosion, but it does depend. If you choose to kill someone, you choose to explode some of your economy at the very least. Elite Boyars and Onagers. Demo Dave has been around the community a while. I would normally expect someone of his experience level to remember that slabs do get Siege Onager. And Tommy says the trade highway is open. This is where you need to get like a little toll area. <laughs> Charge them a fee to go through. I hate freaking tolls, man. What a scam. I hate that crap. We were in the Orlando area, which is near Disney, and the tolls there are insane. So fair warning, if you want to go to Disney World someday, I actually think, I mean, in some ways people overhype it, but in other ways it is pretty cool. There's a lot of different parks, lots of things to do, but the, the traffic and the tolls are just insane. I hate tolls. Horrible. <laughs> I mean, there's also, what's so nice about the way this game is played out is that there are a lot of buildings that will be destroyed. Like, this has been a long game. Normally, when people die, there's not as much on the map. There's plenty for everybody. And yo, here comes the trade. Wow, this is some long-distance trading. Hey, let me see if it shows me yet. Let's see. Okay, it doesn't show me until the market's complete, but I think that's going to be around 140 gold a trip. Oof. Yeah, Varian, aren't you close to Orlando? We went to a concert uh, like two weeks ago. It was, it was really good. Not bad. There was also this little fair. The best thing about the trip was the unplanned thing that happened. There was this fair, so there were a bunch of stands with like, well, we bought hot sauce and pickled jalapenos and got some coffee. And just like small stuff, you know, it was real nice. I didn't really expect it to be going on. I feel like such an old man because I was talking to some dude about his pickled jalapenos for 20 minutes. Don't scare me like that orange. This is high max. Hmm. <laughs> Varian is in a... Varian, I've got a dude. How long has it been? Let's see. The last time I've seen you, was that at the LAN in uh, England? Well, no, we never actually... Uh... I don't think we ever even saw each other in the United States. I think the only time I met you was at the ECL LAN, which might have been three years ago. Well, this year, like right now, I wouldn't be super comfortable hosting a meetup because I think it's a little ir a little irresponsible, uh, depending. I just don't want to go through the stress of it, to be honest, and the headache of it. But I think, hopefully, granted, I am a Florida man, so you never know, but uh, hopefully 2022... I'll have a few meetups. Like, I did one three or four years ago in the States. You know, got some beers, got to meet some people, played some video games. I think that'd be really fun. All right. Lots of trade. Yes. Um. And Yellow says, I'm starting to get hungry for people. So, I thought he was going to say for dinner. Apparently, we have a cannibal over here, unless he's talking about in the game. I hope so. <laughs> Who is my favorite non-top player? Curie asks. My favorite non-top player. Ooh, that's tricky, man. I get why you would say blue coffee, but there's so many good ones that are exciting. Like Ace of Emeralds comes to mind. I Sit comes to mind. I think if I had to pick one, I would have to say Fat Slob because Fat Slob has been doing it for 20 years, and I just love that. And like... Time is passing Fat Slob by. Like, people are on the Definitive Edition now, and Fat Slob's like, Nope! I will never change the settings I play with. I will never change the platform I play. This is all I do. And if you don't like it, you don't have to play me. And he's still going. <laughs> the dude's like 65 years old or 70 years old, according to his profile. So it'd probably have to be Fat Slob. I just, I just love it. I need to get a new Fat Slob video up. It's been a while. I think we'll maybe do that. Uh, I think around Christmas time makes sense. I normally do a big upload around Christmas. 
All right, 42. That can't be right. Does he have another market somewhere? Hold on. Yep, he's got this market. So because he has this market, it's not giving me the proper amount. Okay, 101 gold per trip. And he's got more trade cards queued up. And Temo says to everyone, any teams yet? Yeah, this has been so... S I mean, normally there's one person, like Varian, for example, would be boring. Or, or bored, sorry, not boring. Well, that too. And he would say, I need to kill stuff right now. And they would just attack, and that would kind of start it all off. But no one wants to be the one to start it off here. Hymax says, Tommy, is everything okay there? Okay, we have Team Wholesome down here towards the south. We have a sensitive boy and Tommy. It's weird. They've been communicating, but they're not actually trading together. I've never seen that before. And then you've got Hymax, who really seems to care. Sensitive boy is, is talking about the trade carts. That's pretty much all we're seeing. We do see some siege, but not a whole lot else, unless you're talking about green. Green's got Tarkins, and green's got Cav Archers. <laughs> there should be a tourney with all these non-top players like Batslav, John Slow, Blue Coffee, and so on. <laughs> Can someone screenshot that? Curry, I know you meant well, but John Slow would not appreciate the fact that you just you just looped him in the same conversation as Blue Coffee and Fat Slop. <laughs> Cause you gotta realize John Slow is like he is he is a meme in some ways, but he's like 2K or 2K1. He's like top 200, top 250, depending on the week in the world. <laughs> so I think if someone were to see that. And, or screenshot that and send that to me on Discord. I'll have to send it to him. It's actually his birthday today, too. What a birthday um, wish that is. Nah, I love John Slow. Okay, so Red is trying to talk to Tomatrix. Or not Tomatrix, sorry, Tommy. Same difference. And Tommy is saying, I need space. It's so weird to me how Tommy and Sensitive Boy were all chatting up and they're not even trading together. It's the weirdest thing about this game respecting each other's boundaries and everything too like what that's is the best in the world he beat viper he did beat viper i'm cutting to teal dot dot friends this orange i no no okay demo dave is bored demo dave feels like he has enough gold to make whatever he wants and he wants to attack paladins from Tutans and elite teutonic knights this could be epic Okay, that was not so epic. Demo Dave just killed his own siege, but it's about to go down and High Max says hello. Or he says hi, Max. Now I think siege on your shots will be hugely important here, but I'm really wondering how Boyars are gonna square up. But I feel like Boyars should own Paladin and should own Teutonic Knights. Here comes Green. Green's army will struggle against siege, but Cav Archers and Tarkin's yes. pretty good. If you want to go for a king snipe. Okay, Hi Max says, are we making bigger trade? And it's Demo Dave says yes, so maybe he's not gonna attack. Hmm. Yeah, now it is worth reminding people that I'm undefeated against the Viper in RM. Okay. Undefeated in standard RM ranked games. 1-0. I'm also undefeated against Fat Slob. And Fat Slob beat the Viper. One is a on Viper 1-0. So if you think about it, I'm better than Viper. I mean, had I signed up for Hidden Cups instead of actually hosting them? I mean, easiest wins of my life, right? Teal and Green have a hug army. I'm pretty sure he meant huge, but maybe he thinks they'll hug. I think I will scout their base with my king a bit, just to make sure. What? Tommy, you madman! And Yellow's like, no, don't sacrifice yourself. Wait, Yellow has some swordsmen there. Yellow could actually kill that king. Tommy, what are you doing, buddy? What are you doing? Okay, there goes the king. You're going to kill this king and you don't want to... <gasps> Traffic jam! We thought it was a king, but no, it's it's one of those... One of those dudes that directs traffic, and there's a word for that. Uh, It's not traffic director. Oh, God, your king just got stuck in the freaking trade. What if he doesn't find it? What if he can't find it anymore? This is so bad. Okay, he's cutting another path. 
Tommy, sometimes I just get so confused by you. A traffic cop? Yeah, maybe that's it. <laughs> we got we got Paul Blart out here. Not quite a mall, but uh, it's a good movie. So okay, he's bringing the king back. I think Tommy has realized now. And you've got you've got two separate sides of the road now, and then just like the median. Tommy just doing some weird things right now. Um, over here, we actually had a massive fight, which I completely missed out on because I was too focused on the traffic. And it looks like the Boyars are destroying, as I kind of expected. Boyars have insane melee armor. Imax needs to queue up more Paladins, and he doesn't have a ton of gold. And he doesn't have support from green anymore either. And if you look at the queue for Demo Dave, Demo Dave's going to have a whole lot more. He has Boyars, and he also has champions. It's cool to see the Boyars in action. I don't think there's much that Tutans can really do against Boyars, because a Boyar is like a Teutonic Knight on a horse. Very strong, high melee armor, higher attack, more mobility, more HP. Paladins will help a little bit, but will the Q be there for high max? Remember, the Kings are out here, right? So the Kings could go down. Speaking of Kings... Tommy's king is back in his town center. So you could, if you really wanted to, if you think you're going to die in high max's position, you could send your king into Demo Dave's base, but you probably don't want to do that yet because you just spent two hours playing this game and you don't want to play two hours to die like this, you know? And here comes green as well. So green can help. Yeah, I think if green helps, this will be okay for them. I think cav archers will do very well here. Yeah, there you go. Imexus, thank you. Demo Dave was trickling a little bit. Not grouping up his units anymore. And I think champions, like Slav champions, they'll get killed by the Paladins and Cav Archers. I think Boyars and Siege Onagers are the real worry. Just champion is not going to cut it, so Hymax holds on. Let's check resources. 8,000 gold for purple. For red, 12,000 gold. He's making tons of Ballista Elephants right now. For yellow... 8,000 gold, making two-handed swordsmen, and sending a lot of them this way. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, wait a second! Oh, wait a second! At Demo Dave says, can't handle me on your own to high max. He's like, you're, you're a wuss. You had to get some help. But look at this. Yellow's going in for green. And green's king is right there. Now, green does not have a gather point set very far forward on this castle, which is important because if it dies, it'll die right here. Green has to be careful. He doesn't want to lose this game and hurt his teammate. But I don't think he knows, and his king is now down. Now, will that kill Tommy? <laughs> A lot's going to go down. Imax will also lose his trading partner, but will that range Tommy's TC? I think the answer's no, but it's going to be super close. Here we go. Exploding kings. Ugh. Okay. It does not... Whoa, that's so satisfying. I love it. I love it. That's beautiful. Actually, explain to me how these die, but the trees around it don't. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense to me. This is what I wanted to see. Large cutout of the trees now. Plenty of space. Traffic jam continues. And green, who's now dead, says good job, yellow. Woo! All right. Um, well... Green's army is still helping over here. And yellow disconnects. Oh, no. Thanks, GE. He disconnects. His king won't even explode. For now. <laughs> For now. That king is still out there. And someone could accidentally detonate it at some point. And Hymax is like, people are dying fast, which is very true. We'll see if Demo Dave will die, though. Like, Green's units are coming in clutch here. And the Paladins from Hymax are still coming in, so... I think the problem for Hymax is he doesn't have trade anymore. So he's not going to be able to afford too much as he sells all of his wood. Also doesn't have a teammate. I don't know if he's communicated with Tommy, but maybe should start trading down that direction. Trebuchet says the King Explosion crashed my game. Wait, really? So when the explosion happened, you disconnected? Hmm. Okay, purple saying we go gray, and red says let's get him. Okay, so what? They're gonna go for gray? And they're just gonna pat? Oh, yellow's dead. I'm I'm so dumb. 
I'm sorry. I just forgot yellow disconnected. I feel so bad for yellow. You played two hours to disconnect like this. Ethiopian siege onagers. Crazy splash damage. This is the probably the strongest death ball on the map right now. You know what, though? I think that Hymax and Demo Dave should be buddy-buddy here. I think they need to team up. Because if they don't team up, I think they both die. If Gray goes down, there's no way that Demo Dave's going to be able to do too well without a friend. Hymax lost his buddy. Tomatrix... Or, why do I keep saying Tomatrix? Tommy, excuse me, could maybe be a friend to Hymax right now. And it looks like he might be. Anyways, here come the Showtel Warriors. And there goes there goes Demo Dave's king! Demo Dave has sent his king this way! And if it gets here, you can't do anything about it, people! Is he gonna give it up? Wait, he could tell Purple, turn back or I detonate the king. That's what I would do. I'd leave the king here and say, do not attack me or I kill you. Which, I mean, Purple could run his king away, but still, Purple will lose all of his base. Okay, I mean, I don't know where exactly where the king is going. Wouldn't it be funny, though, if purple turns on orange and then orange ends up losing his king to the castle? Wait, wait, what, what, what? Into the castle? What? Okay. I'm very confused. Ray has longbows. Not bad. And... <laughs> Here come these siege onagers from Tommy. Who I think is going to attack Demo Dave, but I'm a little confused on what's going down right now. Does Tommy just apologize? Tommy's friends with everyone. I didn't know Filster was playing. Thank you, Tommy. I needed that. I'm trading with you, by the way. Okay, so there must have been a big shot, and Orange isn't happy about it. Okay, here come the Showtel Warriors. Oh, this is going to be juicy. This is going to be juicy. Now, this is the play. If you're allied with Yellow... You can delete his castle and delete his king. You can delete enemy, or, or sorry, ally buildings after they leave the game or disconnect. So what would have been funny is Gray deletes the king and then backs up and just waits for the bomb to deal with all of this. As we have ballistas and we have showtels and we have siege onagers. But I don't think, I, I think a lot of people might think that he just, he died and they might not know. Okay. I mean, Britons are just not able to deal with this much firepower. There's no other way to say it. Oh, wait a second. Did Red just turn on per... Oh, no, he's attacking a trade card. Okay, never mind. False alarm. False alarm. I thought he turned. Arn still has his king down here. We have to pay attention to if he stays alive. It's stalemated here for now, so this is the main push we want to focus on. And boom! Big shot. That is way too many Siege Onagers. You cannot micro down that many Siege Onagers with longbows. It's just too much stuff. So Gray needs help, but he's not going to get help from Orange because Orange is, is kind of damaged from before. And boom! Oh, missed it, missed it, missed it. Boom! Great job from Gray, honestly. Very good job from Gray. Considering the situation at hand here, this is could be so much worse. Not sure about loading up into a Siege Tower, but problem for Gray is it's still really bad. And of course, the king is out here too, right? So if the king goes down, we know what happens. There's an explosion. In theory, it could trigger the other king to explode. So I know Trebuchet is going to be upset, but him dying in the way he did could make this really fascinating. Gray's still trying to hold on. He's mixing in light cav, which is probably the only thing you can do to snipe the siege. You can use your longbows to micro. Again, really good job from Gray. This is sick. One shot could wipe his entire army. And he's not allowing it to happen. The king is in this castle. It's being well protected right now. But Ballista Elephant's very good against archers. And they're very good at hitting those archers as well. You just don't have enough if you're on your own. And Demo Dave isn't exactly interested in helping, so... Did something happen between Gray and Orange earlier? Does anyone remember? I think Demo Davis is preoccupied with his own life. He's just too busy. IMAX says, we're the underdogs here, Tommy. And Tommy says, I am bored. 
Tommy, you are at 120 pop with 30 idols, bud. <laughs> like, okay, fair. If you feel like you want some action, he says, I'm going to go now. You could get to 200 pop. Well, it looks like they're going to turn on Demo Dave. I'm telling you, that king, that yellow king is going to be so interesting. And remember, Demo Dave doesn't have his king. <gasps> Tommy! Tommy's turned on High Max! What? Oh, the ultimate betrayal. I never expected that. When Tommy said he was going to go, I didn't think that he would turn against High Max. Oh, geez. And Tommy will still lose all the Siege Onagers, but that was crazy. And wait a second. Oh, Tommy came in to kill High Max. He came in for the kill. I'm not sure if he was focused over there, if he was focused over here, or both. But the king for High Max is still alive. It is still back here. And High Max says, You double crossed me. <laughs> the thing is, Tommy did that without any obvious communication to Demo Dave, unless I missed some of that chat somehow. Huh. I'm, I'm a little confused by that. I might have missed some chat. But that was the biggest surprise of the game. And now I think Hymax is screwed. Hymax needed Tommy to stay in this game, to have a chance. Demo Dave is a really good player who I think is motivated as well just not to go out this early and to leave his mark on the game. Gray still alive, by the way. The king is back here. So he's still hung around somehow. But you have to imagine the next wave of Showtels and Ballistas will probably finish him off. Now there's no Trebs. Yet for our okay, no, there's Trebs from Tommy. Okay, so if he can get this Trebs on the castle, it's okay here. Wait, where's the king? Where's the king? Oh, <gasps> no way! The king made it through. Hi, Max is running with this king, and we know where he's going. He's going right to Tommy's base. Oh, Tommy, you done goofed, bud. You're bored, huh? Okay, well, you're going to be out of the game pretty soon. Oh, that's so good from High Max. Because he knows he's probably dead. Wait, how can he see... Oh, he's allied with Yellow. Oh, High Max, please delete Yellow's King before you delete your own. He won't think of it, so don't get your hopes up. But that would be such an epic play. You can delete allies, buildings, and units when they're dead. Tommy's actually running now. What's happening? I... Did Tommy notice that? I mean, Tommy was pretty free-spirited with his king earlier on in the game. Guys, <laughs> so I, I have no clue what to think of this beyond the fact that Tommy just likes to run around with his king. Hey, Hymax just researched treason, and I think he now finds out that this king is on the move. And I don't know if he chases it or what. Why would Tommy go this way? Well, he doesn't want to lose his king, right? That's obvious. This push continues. Wait a second. Wait a moment. Tommy could kill Demo Dave and Cuxfield at the same time. And if he's lucky, if the placement's good enough, he could maybe kill Red as well. If he were to detonate here, or let's say here, I think he kills Red, he kills Purple, and he kills Orange. Where's the king at? I missed it. Oh god, where'd the king go? Guys, where's the king? I don't see the king. Where is it? I don't see it. The king. There it is. Now, it'd be very tough for him to know that Orange has this king in this castle. The safe play is probably just detonated in the middle of all this. Tommy says you don't need to be scared anymore. IMAX says GG well played. As the explosion goes off, it wipes Tommy off the face of the earth. And then Tommy... Okay, as Gray is defeated... Wait, did his king go down? His king did go down, but where... Okay, the king was there. And at the same time, Tommy... I don't see any longer over here. And now I need to somehow get to his point of view and I need to check again. It won't let me check his king, guys. It won't let me check his king. He Okay, he must have deleted it. It's somewhere on this part of the screen. I'm going to look for it. We'll have an explosion over here. It went off. But now this is what matters. Where did he explode that? Oh! <laughs> what? 
No way! And a sensitive boy wins! And Purple's like, what? What? He says, dang, it was just getting fun. And a sensitive boy says, well played, gents. Wow, okay. So, to wrap up what happened there, Gray ends up dying, and he was killed by Red and by Purple. And then because Demo Dave had brought his king over to Purple earlier, both Purple and Orange go down at the same time, leaving Sensitive Boy with the victory. That was eventful. So, honestly, respect to Tommy. I know Hymax might be a little annoyed with him for the backstab, but respect to Tommy for doing that. Because he went down, Hymax went down, but the other guys went down as well. I'm sure Sensitive Boy won't complain either. Yeah, there's something so satisfying about Exploding Kings, right? <laughs> Gray's like, I don't understand what happened. <laughs> I wouldn't understand it either, but... Exploding Kings is so funny, man. I still think... That's something I'd like to see a little bit more, and we saw someone try it earlier on in the stream. I think something that needs to happen more is... Players using their kings to get resources from people or to get people to do what they want. I just want someone to go in there and then have their king be in, let's say, purple's base like Demo Dave did and say, hey, give me 2,000 gold or I'm going to delete my king. I just want to see what happens. Not saying it's a good strategy to win the game, but it'd be so funny. Or you could even be nicer about it and be like, hey... My king's been having heart issues, and he might have a heart attack. Can you lend me resources so I can pay for his doctor visit? You know, <laughs> I'm just like, I'm just trying to think of ideas. Now, earlier today, I don't want to fully spoil it for you guys, but it will be on YouTube at one point. Someone tried that, so he put his king inside of uh, someone's town center, told the person it's in your town center, and they ejected the town center out to... um. The middle of the map walled it in and then killed the king, which was hilarious. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened to Yellow's king. Um, oh, yeah, Yellow's king didn't go off yet. Wait, it's alive. Oh, yeah, the explosion didn't hit Yellow's king. Interesting. So, <laughs> well played, everyone. Um, yeah, mutually assured destruction. That was a funny game. We, we got to see what we wanted to see. We got to chill out, and I got to talk to you guys a little bit more. About certain things. Uh, Hymax with the most kills in that game. Woo! 610 kills. Something tells me his demo contributed there. Or his uh, his nuke. Pretty sure the kings do contribute to the KD. Um, like green, for example. 422 kills. I think a lot of that came back to the, the king. Uh, trade count was pretty even overall. Purple had a really good army composition. But I guess he forgot about Demo Dave. He had 60,000 gold brought in in total. 32,000 of which from trade. And the timeline normally shows you pretty clearly when the demos went off and when the kings died. But solid game there. Can't complain too bad. 